Well, this morning, every prayer request, everything that's been said in here has revolved around faith. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Lord laid on my heart Monday, you know. Read and studied on it all week. So you turn to chapter or Mark chapter six. Be one place I'll be reading. The other one is Mark chapter eight and uh, Hebrews chapter twelve. Chapter 6, verse 1. It says, And he went out from thence and came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence has this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him? That even such mighty works are wrought by his hands. Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph, and of Judah and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they were of, and they were offended at him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own house. And he came. And he came, sorry, bless you, Lord. And he could there do no mighty works, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief, and he went out around about the villages teaching. And the main one of us is uh, verse 3. You know, all these people watch Jesus grow up Bless you, Lord. and uh, I've been guilty of it myself you know they watched the man Jesus was they knew him as a man not the son of God <coughs> they get in the carnal mind and uh, because of this Jesus couldn't do nothing for them that's a sad place to get he was marveled at their unbelief, you know. I've I've been guilty of it. I'm sad to say is I've heard people I grew up with knew them my whole life, knew what kind of person they was, and uh, I hear they get saved or something, you know. And I'm first thinking, well, I, we'll see how long that lasts, you know. And. Uh, I'm taken away from the faith of Jesus Christ. Because look what he did in my life. I mean, people should say that about me. Um, over in chapter 8. Sighed deeply in his spirit and saith, Why does this generation seek after a sign? Verily I say unto you, There shall no sign be given unto this generation. And he left them and entered into the ship again, departed to the other side. Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread, neither had they any in the ship with them more than one loaf. And he charged them, saying, Take heed, beware of the leaving of the Pharisees and the leaving of the of Herod. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, it's Because we have no bread. And when Jesus knew it, he saith unto them, For I reason ye because you have no bread. Perceive ye not, neither understand, have you your heart yet hardened. Having eyes see you not, and having ears hear you not, and do you not remember. When I break the five loaves of among the five thousand, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? They said unto him, Twelve. 
And when he, the seven among the four thousand, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? And they said, Seven. And he said unto them, How is it that you do not understand? You know, the disciples in the day walked with Jesus, they seen every miracle performed. And when I read this, I took it as, you know, they still didn't have the faith. After all Jesus has done, they think they couldn't have been fed with one loaf of bread. Even though Jesus here was talking about the, the teaching of the Pharisees, it's what he was talking about, and they was over here on the, out in the outfield, you know. But every one of us has seen Jesus Christ work in our lives. We all know without a doubt that he can do anything we ask. But yet, we put restrictions on him. Lester, you talk about how big is your God. You know, it amazes me how people can let it get in their head that, you know, Jesus can't do this, or, you know, I ain't got no hope. But even the disciples, with Jesus right there with them, had the same thoughts. And I'm sure it breaks... Jesus' heart when we stand there in unbelief. Knowing that He's walked with us daily, held our hand, kept us from doing things we shouldn't, kept us out of harm's way. Got us through times that we didn't think we'd make it through. And it's... I like this part here. It says, when Jesus knew it. See, Jesus knows everything just through our mind. We... Ain't nobody got to tell him anything. He knows it. And you sit down and read the Gospels. It, it says that a lot of times the disciples went and talked among themselves and Jesus knew it. He'd say something. You know, and it, I'm glad He knows what I'm going through. I'm glad He knows what I need. And uh, <clears throat> Faith is a hard thing sometimes. <coughs> The hardest time I had with it is me and my wife, we we had a child and it was born early. She died at 23 weeks. And uh, that's the hardest time I believe I've had in my life. She said, I, I like to act like I'm a manly man, nothing gets to me, but it does. Bless you, Lord. The hardest thing I've had to do so that little baby in my hands. It had a face, it had hands, it had toes. Yeah, come on. <clears throat> and wondering the whole time, was there something in my life that caused him not to have a life? Bless him, Lord. And uh, I tell you, when you got to go to a graveyard and dig a grave for your little unborn son, that's a hard thing to do. It stays in my mind. Bless the Lord. Well, my wife about let it take her down. I said we've come too far for the Lord to go back now. Amen. And uh, I said just have faith. You know, God knows why that child wasn't born. And uh, I still don't understand it, but uh, I have faith that God did what was right. Because he ain't gonna do something that goes against his word. Well, a few months went by and she got pregnant again. Well, the devil first thing he did was said, you know, you're gonna be digging another grave. And I fought with it for weeks. I never let on to my wife. I mean, I tried to stay strong in front of her because she was going through the same battle. You know, she went through a lot more than I did. Bless you, Lord. And uh, I prayed and I prayed and I said, God, it's in your hands. I'm having faith that he'll, he'll be all right. And I had peace about it. And uh, I still worried about it from time to time. The devil wouldn't leave me alone with it, but 
after I prayed that sincere time and God said it's okay, I never prayed for it again. Yes, amen. Because I knew if I did, I wasn't trusting God. Yeah, amen. 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 I ain't saying, you know, not to repeat your prayers, nothing like that, but put it in God's hands and go on. If you burden down with it, you ain't trusting Him. He's there to carry our load. And, uh, you know, now I've got a beautiful baby boy. He's uh -huh. over one year old now. God's good to me. But that took a lot of faith on my part, and that's where I really grew. And over in Hebrews 12, <laughs> I really like chapter 11 and 12. There's a lot of good reading in it. <coughs> Verse 1 says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about the so great cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and sin which do easily beset us, and let us run our, let us run with patience the races set out before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, before the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and set it down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be weary and faint in your minds. You have not yet resisted unto blood striving against sin. <clears throat> when we get to heaven doubt, or when I do, I stop and think about what Jesus went through for me. You know, <clears throat> Nathan Wagner sings a song that says how deep the nails went. That song carried me up. And uh, I never really thought about it. And, uh, but it didn't just pierce the heart. It pierced the heart of God to put His Son up for a wicked worthless people just so that they might take a chance on Jesus. You know, a lot of us say, yeah, we die for our wives or our children. You know, they love us. But could you go out here and die for somebody that cares less about you? I'll just take a chance that they might live. And uh, When I find myself getting in having doubts or not trusting in Him. I think about that. Amen. I go back and reread the crucifixion, you know. Amen. Keep that in your mind. He went through a lot for me. Amen. And uh, I don't know why. I'll never understand that. And uh, When I mess up and sin, I know it breaks his heart. How could it not? Price he paid for us, and then we just do so easily go out and do something stupid, knowing better. And then stop and think about that. Just how much you're breaking your, your Savior's heart. Have faith in what he can do. Because it's, it's easy to get in this earthly flesh and see slim chances of anything. And, uh, but I know we can. All through this book, he did things that would not be able to be done. He uh, healed the sick, healed the blind. And he considered it a joy. Yeah. I don't know, it, like I said, it tore me up this morning listening to people's prayers that have faith in it. Amen. Like I said, I, it seems like I have everything planned out in my mind what I want to say before I get up here and it's just all leaving. Never works out. 
When I'm sitting back there, I'm ready to shout. Get up here and it's just like a, I lose everything. Yeah. study in this word more. I, I think it's serious. I want to help somebody. <clears throat> more times I'm probably just helping myself. But uh, Like I said, Jesus has done way too much for us not to believe and have faith in him. Especially as a saved Christian, I can understand a lost person that he walked with him through their life. I mean, God still looks over the wicked too, but you know He He's done so much for me, and yet I still have doubt sometimes. Ain't no excuse for that, like Jerry teaches. You know, when are we just going to sit down and realize and get it right? Amen. And because uh, we've got it all laid out before us. I mean, come on. This book tells us exactly what we should do, how we should think, how we should live our lives. We've got an instruction manual, but like most men, we don't want to read it until we've screwed everything up. <clears throat> you know that I've got these couple of pieces. These people in the, the Old Testament, they didn't have this. That took a lot of faith back then. All they had was a promise. And uh, I admire that, that. Like Abraham, it took a lot of faith to take his son up that mountain Amen. and sacrifice him. But you know, I believe he wasn't worried. I don't think he thought a thing about it. He knew the Lord would take care of it. So. That's how we should be. Quit worrying about everything and let God handle it. I mean, He sent His Son to die for us just for that. But we have a way of escape. And, you know, it, several places it talks about when He cast out devils. He told them the devils not to say anything. They knew who Jesus Christ was. Amen. They knew exactly who he was, and uh, why can't we be that way? Why can't we know exactly who Jesus is Amen. and what he can do? Uh, chime in at any time. <laughs> I like that verse, so can you? There, Mark eight, and he said, and he said unto them, How is it that ye do not understand? And before all that, he talked about the loaves and the things that they had seen. And I know Josh and Lee ain't here, but I, I told this. I believe it was one Wednesday night after Lee had found out she's pregnant. And she's worried about uh, what might happen. And and that and that's natural. That's fine. That's you get in this place, and we see. So you know, you might always assume the worst. But I told her, I said, "Well, God done gave you one. What makes you think He won't take care of this one?" And it, it's it's just like having faith, and like what He's telling the disciples right here. I've seen so much stuff God's done for me, and and, and this this work gets personal. It, that that's why I say too, it's important. To have a personal relationship with Jesus. I don't base my faith on David's. I don't base my faith on George. I don't base it on Mitchell's or anybody else's. It's, it's my faith with my relationship with my Lord and Savior. So I can't I can't I can't help my wife have more. I can't help anybody else in it's my faith that I know things that he can do, things I've asked him for, things I've seen done. That festival Penny's are talking about and, and the story about the deer. I was going home that night and I probably still had them same slick tars on there that night because Michelle had called and thought she'd heard somebody at the house. And I was working third shift and I 
flew home. And anybody that's ever traveled that road knows those deer on there 24 7. I asked him, Lord, don't. I, I, I got to get home. I don't have time to dodge deer. I can't go 10 mile an hour across this road. I've got to get home. And I held her wide open. They was raising them tars as slick, I guess. And I held her down. I didn't let out. And I didn't see a deer until I turned around and was headed back to work. And they was all over the place, standing on the white lines of the road, going back to work. And ever since that story, I always thought I'm just going to hold it wide open. If I, I asked God on the way home, coming down Phoenix Creek, I said, God, when I get to the river out here, don't let any deer be in my way. I've got to get home to my wife and my youngin. And I held it down. I, the normal places I've seen deer, I didn't let off the gas. I held it down because I didn't ask him. Because I knew he would do that for me. And I knew he was fully right. capable of that. Well, this morning, if you... If, if, if you're having problems with your faith, you need to hold it down. It, it, the only reason I'd let out that gas was the only reason I'd let out the throttle when I got to the certain place is because I didn't believe he's going to hold them deer back. And the only reason you'd let out of your faith this morning is because you don't really believe. That's what it comes down. I, I I knew he'd keep the deer. I knew he would. Uh, because I knew that. I. I, did, I, did, I don't expect anybody else in there to believe that when I come down to the creek at night and just pray. That, it's not for you to believe it. It's for me to believe it. And now it's up to you and your life and your situations on what you want to believe. That, just like he said, Lester always says, how big is your God? Do you believe? I, I'm not asking you to believe with me about God and keeping them deer from running out in front of me. That's beside the point. The point is, what do you believe Him for? Just like Leah was a believing for that for their second child to be okay. And, and, and of course, naturally you were. You think, well, you know, the, the one died, then they had Sam, then here we are again. What's going to happen? Well, what do you mean what's going to happen? With any situation you're dealing with, why, why wouldn't God take care of this young and she's a carrier? Why wouldn't He? Uh, it's faith. I believe Leah has faith and Josh has faith enough to know that they're, they're going to be just fine. It comes down. It's, it's so personal. I, I can't just suck. I know I've said it a bunch. It comes down between you and Christ and you and God your personal really. It's personal to me. I, I, I've got, and I've told this before, I've got things nobody knows. You better have something in your life you pray for that only you and God knows about and you've seen it either come to pass or not be answered for one reason or another. But there's got to be something. It's just like teaching when I was praying about stepping down. I couldn't tell nobody. That's between me and God. It's just like at night I, come, I didn't call David and tell him, I'm on my way home, help me pray these deer don't jump out in front of me. That didn't happen. It wasn't up to his. It, it was for me. It's I don't, I don't have to see all it. I, I don't have. To, I appreciate the testimonies and the things people have it, it, in order to help us. But I, I don't have to have your faith and your testimonies and your stories to to, to <clears throat> confirm what I believe. I know I've done seen it, but now I'm not saying that it don't help because it does help. But I I I, I, I understand. I understand what he's up. I understand how God works and what he's up to, and I thank him for it. I thank him for giving me enough faith. It ain't uh, hard to get through this life without it. Yeah, amen. amen. Well, the Bible says that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of amen. God. And if you believe the word of God, then you know that God has delivered his people. These people, it's, it's documented and recorded in the Word of God, was true living people. They were people that walked upon this earth, same as me and you. Elias, he said, Elias was a man of like passion, such as we are, and he prayed for it to rain not, and it rained not a space of three years and six months. Do you Amen. believe that? A mortal man prayed because God gave him the power to pray. Uh, the theologians called Elijah the, the prophet of fire. He's the one that called the fire down out of heaven many, many times. But Elijah got down to the place and he thought he was the only uh, prophet left and he sat down under the juniper tree over there beside the brook and sought for God that he would die. Yeah. That he was the only one left. God sent an angel smote him on the side and told him to arise and eat. Had a 
Keck baked on a fire there while he was asleep wanting to die and he said arise and eat for the journey is too hard for you. The Bible said that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You mentioned Isaac and Abraham there. Well, when Abram went to take Isaac upon the mountain, you know what he told him first and foremost? He took the wood, he took the, the knife, he took all the things for a sacrifice. Yeah. And he led his son up the mountain. Amen. And when his son asked him where the sacrifice was, he said, God will supply himself yeah. a sacrifice. Amen. 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 And he walked to the top of that mountain, took that lad, laid him on the altar, <coughs> reared his arm back to kill his son, and an angel stayed his arm, and there was a ram stuck in the thicket. Amen? Amen. God supplied himself a sacrifice. Amen. Human beings, and Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. He began to warn them in that scripture there in Mark, amen, to beware of the leveling of the Pharisees. Leveling meant the teachings of Pharisees. It wasn't what they made, the yeast they made bread out of. It was the teaching that man was teaching them. They taught what they could see, not by faith. The Bible said, amen, faith is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. Can I get an amen? I believe Abraham saw a sacrifice on top of that mountain before he ever got to the bush. I believe he could see it with the eye of faith. Now listen to what I'm fixing to say. Faith don't come on top of the mountain and shout the victory. Faith comes with trials and tribulations and the hard times of life. When you don't think you can walk anymore and you get to the place you wonder where God's at, God has forsaken you. But there was an old my old there was one put a plaque on the wall and there was a set of footprints in the sand. And the, and the reading began like this. He said, God, when the hardest part of my time came, you forsaken me. He said, in the hardest things in my life, I looked behind me and there's only one foot set of footprints in the sand. All the good times you walked with me, there was two sets. But in the hard times of my life, God, there was only one set of footprints. Why did you leave me? God said, I didn't leave you, child. That's when I was carrying you. Amen. You see, when we survive and things happen that we have no control over and we got the victory, that ought to tell us, the Bible said, the trying of your faith is more precious than gold when you know that you've come through it and God has carried you when the next battle comes you've got confidence and peace that God got it the first time and he'll take it the next time and make it home Amen 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 Praise God, I don't doubt God, I doubt me. Amen. Bless him, Lord. Am I getting the right? Am I getting the right message, Lord? Am I getting what I need? Am I turning where you want me to turn? Am I doing what you want me to do? I tell people all the time in the stores, they ought to make one candy bar. Yeah. Take it or leave it. Too many choices in life, ain't there? Ain't that what the religious crowd gave people? You can choose to believe anything you want to. But by faith, the only thing you can believe is what God saw. Yeah. Moses chose to suffer the affliction with God's children right. than rather the, the pleasures of sin for a season in the king's palaces. Amen. Amen. And the Bible said he endured to the end as though he saw him that was invisible. Amen. He saw the evidence of a God that was so real. Amen. That he picked him up and he began to move him down through life. Can I get an amen? You see, people can't see what I can see. You know why? Because they've never been through what I have been through. Can I get an amen? But once you experience something like I have, you know God's real. And you know He's able to reach down in the darkest hours of your life and shine a light. Can I get an amen? And Sister Penny talked about the slick tires. That was the testimony of that little Ford car. Can I get an amen? How else would you have made it where you made it? Can I get an amen? Somebody better know what I'm talking about. Amen. When I learned to grow, it wasn't in the easy times. It wasn't in the shouting times. It was in the hard times of life. 
that God proved Himself to me. Amen. That's when you can trust God. Can I get an amen? If you ever had to be in a spot and you needed the bleeding to stop. Now people think I'm crazy when you get to talking about Ezekiel 16 and 6. They think that... They think you're some kind of nutcase. But I'm here to tell you it works. It works by faith. If you don't believe anything else in the Word of God, do you might as well not even read it. Go on and get you a band-aid to try to stop it. But I'm telling you right now, God can take the Word of God and do anything He wants to. You know what, people? I asked a fellow a question the other night. I said, the Bible's got a question. I preached on this question many, many times, Brother Kenny. The Bible said, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Amen. Amen. Bless you, Lord. Name something to me, anything that you can dream of that's too hard for God. Just tell me something that you can dream of that the God in heaven that spoke it into existence. God didn't reach down. Amen. Praise God and form the heavens and the earth out of some material. You know what He done? The Bible said God spoke it and it existed. Can I get an amen? He even said let there be life and praise God there was life. Can I get an amen? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Come on, praise God. God. He made the heavens and the earth. He spoke it into existence. The Word of God. So what tells me the Word of God can't completely take care of my life? Everything I need is in this book. Every answer I need is in this book. Say, preacher, it's not in there. It is if you want the answer. Can I get an amen? Amen. Faith comes from hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Amen. When you hear about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you say, oh, I know them three. They're the ones that was in the fiery furnace. They're the three that wouldn't bow down. They're the three that chose to walk for God in a world that was changing like everybody else is changing today. But the Bible said, amen, when they bound them hand and foot. And the Bible said that the king... Man, now, you talk about faith. They could have changed their mind when they had to face the furnace. I preached on double-mindedness here just a while back. I see it more and more and more. People are not settled. They're not steadfast. They're not settled on what they believe, how they live. Because if they were settled, they wouldn't be doing the things that they're doing and making excuses because of why they're doing it. Can I get an amen? amen. That's double-mindedness. Now you can make excuses all you want to, but the sins in this book is black and white. If it says it's sin, it's sin. If you do it, you're wrong. Can anybody say, can I get an amen? And there's penalties for sinning. Can I get an amen? That's faith. And when you fear God, the Bible said to fear God is the beginning of wisdom. When you mess up, you know you're going to get it. Can I get an amen? Now I didn't have no doubt in my mind, Randy Jones, that whenever I messed up at home, you know why I didn't back and talk to my mama? You know why I didn't stand up and cuss my daddy? Because I knew without a shadow of a doubt and I trusted what happened in my place that my daddy would have jerked a knot in me that wouldn't have come untied for a long time. Can I get an amen? amen? And when you know God like I know God, when you mess up, you look, pray God, for God's chest in hand to come and it's a coming. Can I get an amen? amen. But I've been in a lot of places. A lot of places. <laughs> I've asked for a lot of things. I told I could, I could go through this. I could tell you things that God has done for me down through time. We'd be here forever. Be here forever. When God started wanting me to preach, He showed me things that this world could not prove to me. I knew without a shadow of a doubt before. Amen. That I knew that I had to preach. There was no question about it. I knew I had to preach. Amen. You boys that say you're called a preacher, you trust in God. 
They know this junk and I don't know whether I'm called or not. You know whether you're called or not. Amen. Amen. And if you're not, sit down and say I'm not. If you are, praise God, go on and preach. Amen. Now that's my advice. Say, preacher, you can't tell people that. Let me tell you something. If God's a calling you, you ain't going to get out of it. Amen. Amen. And praise God, He'll get some place that you'll have to. Amen. So praise God, I don't believe I'd suffer, but I ain't talking you into anything. But you can make a mess if you ain't. Can I get an amen? amen. Now God said it in the Word, and I can prove it to you all over this place. When God began to deal with me, Keith Roy, brother talked about his child. Yeah, right. We got a baby in glory. One of the hardest things I've ever faced in life. Me and my wife both. <coughs> Scared us to death when she got pregnant with Kayla. Kayla come along. Had to have a C-section with her. Kelsey come along. Pray. God was getting me ready for something. With Kayla, God put me in a place that Kayla wanted to sing everywhere she went. Amen. And God was getting me ready to stand before a congregation. I didn't even know that. When Kelsey was born, my, Melinda had complications. Never had a, a, a pain or anything. Went to the doctor to get ready to have, have, have the baby over at Watauga Medical Center that morning. They told her she'd never go into labor. Nothing like that had ever happened. The morning we went to the hospital, she went into labor. Amen. Praise God, they gave her a shot, an epidural, and it numbed everything in her body, her lungs and everything. My wife was literally laying in front of my eyes, dying, amen, and there wasn't a thing I could do about it. And I felt about this big and helpless. And I'm the guy, amen, that told my wife through the whole pregnancy, don't worry, God's got it. Don't worry, God's got it. Honey, ain't that what I told you? Don't worry. God's got me. But I'm getting a still of the night and I'd be scared to death. God, I don't know how it's going to work out. God, please don't let it die. Please don't take care of my wife and me a profession to my wife. Hey, man, it's going to be all right. But that morning in the hospital, hey, man, when the surgeons began to run and everybody panicked, I knew right then it was not all I fell down to the bedside and I began to pray, God, you got to put your arms around this and show my wife that you're here today. My God, he did, but it wasn't for my wife. It was for Dave Laws. My faith needed to be increased. Amen. I saw God's hands. <coughs> they rushed her into the operating room, and, and I've told this before, I'll tell it again. They rushed her into the operating room. One was a pumping air in and out of her lungs. And I guess I fell in love with my wife's eyes. I, I, she got the prettiest eyes. And that day, all I could see was her eyes and the tears dripping down her. Later on in life, she said, I wanted to tell you it's okay that God was with us. And said I couldn't talk. You see, that's the reason hitting under her lungs because she couldn't talk. She couldn't tell me it was something I needed to see. I held on to her hand, I stood and I prayed, and I prayed to God, please Lord, let my family live. And I started in the, in the operating room, and I started bargaining with God, and I said, God, do anything you want me to do. Anything, God, if you need me to do anything, I'll do whatever. I'll be a water boy, I'll be a doorman in the house of God, I'll be anything you want me to do, please don't let them die. I need them, I need my wife. I need my children. I don't want to raise my baby by myself. God help me. They took Kelsey out and she was blue. Just as black and blue as she could be. Was not breathing. She didn't cry. I knew something was wrong. I grabbed her, rushed her out of the room. The nurse got me by the arm and she said, Mr. Lyles, you can't go with your wife. But you can go with the baby if you want to. 
And I'll never forget the feel of turning my wife's hand loose and the tears in her eyes. I felt helpless. I went into the into the ICU unit where the children or the babies were at, and they had her in a, a little glass box there, and they had her in the hole. I still see it. Had tubes run into her, Melinda. Had a machine set up to the side and a, a tube in her pen, and that tube would blow air, and her little chest would pump up, and it'd go down, and she just lied to slam her teeth. And, just pumping the air in there, keeping her alive. And the nurse walked up and she got me to the shoulder and she said, Mr. Lyle, she said, reached through that little hole and rubbed her foot. Said, she knows your voice. She's heard you for nine months. Said, speak to her, tell her you're here. I went to rubbing her feet and I was telling her, I said, Daddy's here. She said, please don't worry. Your daddy's here. I'll be here with you. And I was rubbing her legs and her feet and the thing of pumping her body full of air. And I'll never forget it. I asked God, I said, God, please don't let her die. Bless him, Lord. Please don't let this baby die. Because I need her. And I said, Lord, I'll do anything that you want me to do. I'll do anything. And all at once, there was a light shining into that place. God's my witness. I saw two hands reach down out of glory. Looked like a shadow that come out of heaven and they were in the form of human hands and He reached down into that glass box and as He reached around that baby, she started screaming. The buzzers went off. The nurse ran into the room, Jeff, and they went to pull the hoses out and that baby is screaming to the top of her lungs and the glory had sent all over me. I couldn't tell nobody what I say. I couldn't talk about it for crying. That nurse, you talk about faith. That nurse wrapped her up. And you could see the confusion in her eyes and her face. They checked her out, laid her on the table, checked her out, and they wrapped her up, ran it. They handed her to me and they said, Mr. Wiles. Don't worry if she cries all day, said these young ones when they come through this trauma, said they'll probably cry all day, most of the night. <clears throat> Brian, I'll never forget the look in her face. I set her down. I sat down in that big old rocking chair in that place, Eric, and I sat down. And I held her up close and I looked down at her little eyes. And I looked in her eyes many times. And I prayed. And I began to sing to her, and I was singing, Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. She just fell off to sleep. It's been a many a time in my life since then that my little baby girl needs a prayer. And we pray against him. And that same God that lets you live spared you of any time. Faith comes by here and here is my Lord of God. I got evidence my God lives right now. Amen. Been through a lot of hard times in life just because God saved you and called you to preach and it. You walk to you and talk to you don't mean you don't have to face hard times. That's the reason, Randy, when I look at you, I can tell you, my God is real. You know my God's real. That's the reason I can give you some advice that God is still on the throne. And there's nothing too hard for God, no matter what you face. No matter what you're going through. God is still real. And the devil, he's a, he's a deceiver. He's a liar. He don't want you trusting God. He don't want you giving it all over to Him. He don't want you doing this because of the moment. Uh, let me, can I, can I preach this a minute? 
my mind goes crazy sometimes. The children of Israel, and I want you to get a scene of this, and I want you to, to get this in your mind. The children of Israel, when they walked away from Pharaoh's courts and they left Egypt, God was delivering them to the Canaan land, the promised land that God promised them. That's what He promised them. A land that flowed from milk and honey. A land that had things that are bigger and greater than anything we've ever seen. He talked about it this morning. Your sister's over there. My mama's over there. I got aunts and uncles over there. I got grandmas and grandpas on the other side. They went through a wilderness. The Bible said they wandered around that wilderness 40 years. Their shoes didn't get wore out. Their, thread, their clothes didn't get threadbare, and they never went hungry. You better read the book. Because God went with them, a pillar of fire by night, a pillar of cloud by day, that's the Word of God. But they come down to a, a place in life where that they had to believe God. They come to the Red Sea, and they talk about faith, and I want you to get a hold of this. They got down to the Red Sea, and there was no way across according to the Word of God. And the Bible said that Moses came to God, and he began to speak, and the Lord said, Why? Call ye upon me to tell my people to go forward. Amen. That was probably the craziest message that Noah ever taught, that ever preached to the congregation of Israel. Go forward when the Red Sea was in front of them, Pharaoh was behind them, and hey, man, they could see. Now, now the devil is full of drama. You ever see anybody full of drama? They want to act out. They want to act it out. The dust was rolling up off of the feet of Pharaoh's yeah. army. The chariots, the horses, and the foot. And they were coming to get the children of Israel. And they began to murmur, Keith Rourke, and they said it'd have been better if we'd have died in Israel or in Egypt than here. Bless you, Lord. Amen. The Bible said they camped there overnight. And the Bible said that God removed them, said the angel removed himself from in front of them and stood between them, behind them. They a pale little cloud. They couldn't see one another, camped right beside one another, and couldn't even see one another. Read the book. They were so close to believe the Bible said they could reach out and got a hold of one another, but they couldn't see one another because of why? Because of the angel of God. Amen. Now the Bible said that God made an east wind to blow all night long. And you know what that east wind done? It stirred the water. And the Bible said when they woke up the next morning that God parted the water. And all God's people crossed on the dry ground. Now if you want to see what faith looks like. Can I show you what faith looks like? I preached this one time and a preacher told me I was crazy because I preached about the sea of faith. The Red Sea when they crossed over. The Bible said all God's children crossed over and their feet was on the other side. And they looked back and you know what they saw? They saw Pony Road in court. And all these chariots coming in uh, to the Red Sea. And you know what the Bible said that God done? He made the chariot wheels fall off right and they were dragging. Amen. Huh? You remember this? Say, coincidence. God knocked the wheels off of them. That's right. They began to drag. And the Bible said that when the last child of God stepped out on the other side, that God let the waters come in upon the Egyptians. And you know what they saw? They saw Pharaoh and his army dead in the Red Sea. You see, the devil knows when you cross the Sea of Faith, and you look back what God's done for you, there's no stopping you then. No matter what circumstances, whether it be cancer, sister, penis, amen, whatever it is, Brother Keith, that we have to face in life, there's still a measure of faith that we can make it to the other side. Amen. When we get to the other side, we can look back at our life, sister. You know what we see? The enemy. Amen. Huh? The devil ain't going to power over you this morning unless you give it to him. The Bible said this. The Bible said it's impossible to please God without faith. And faith without works is dead. Can I get an amen? Come on. Faith without works is dead. 
There's been a lot of things in life, Eric, that would have never come to pass if we hadn't had enough faith to know that God was in it before we ever got there. You know the And the thing about it is, I saw something the other day. It ain't done yet. It ain't done yet. Amen. It ain't done yet. Why do you think the devil's a war in so hard? He's trying to slow it down. He don't want it to happen. He don't want it to happen. Why do you think this war right here is bad? Huh? Why do you think you're bad? He you ain't to sit on place the chapel church. You take your hands and look good. Come on. There's a reason for him to be here. Don't sit down. Get back up here. You ain't done yet. <laughs> Kenny, I appreciate you. You see, everybody wants faith and they want to be some super saint, but you don't get to the place. There was a preacher told me one time, he said, I want the he said, I prayed for the boldness that Dave Lyles has got. And I said, You're in trouble. You are in trouble. He said, why is that? I said, because I got to where I'm at by fighting a battle, praise God. And there's a battle coming. This whole world fell apart, brother. I said, now how does it feel to be bold? Amen. It don't come without a cost. I don't care what you do. It don't come without a cost, brother. Amen. It don't come without a cost. My salvation came with a great price. Amen. Jesus Christ paid it all. Can I get an amen? Right. Come on. Amen. And everything you do whew, comes with a price. I love you this morning. I hope and pray somebody got something. You see, faith ain't something that's obtained. Amen. Jesus, the Lord told him, said, I give every man a measure of faith. Every one of us. It's got enough faith to believe if we do exercise it. Did you have, uh, let me ask you this. Has anybody tried God? Amen. Anybody? I'd like to see your hands. Amen. And don't like that. Have you ever tried God? Amen. Tried Him and proved Him? Amen. Do you know what He can do? <clears throat> I remember when Kenny and Zelda started coming to this church. Amen. Huh? I remember the pain in her eyes. And then when you found out you was going to have this baby right here, the fear hit you, didn't it? It wasn't no longer pain, it was fear. Do you remember what I said to you standing right up here that morning? And I told you, I preached on Wednesday night, that God did not give us the spirit of fear, but of love and of a sound mind. Power. He gave us power. I thank God for this baby. Amen. I thank God for these people. Amen. Amen. You think about what I'm talking about. You say, preacher, I pray and pray. It don't look like it's ever going to happen. When are you going to start trusting? Amen. Do you pray and then doubt? Or do you know that it's done? It's done and done. It's done and done. When God says it's finished, it's finished, brother. When God says it's coming, it's coming. You might as well make room for it. Say, preacher, you've lost your mind. Make room for it. Huh? If something's coming to your house and you know God's sending it, go ahead and make room for it. If you need to build on, build on. Get ready for it. Say, preacher, you've lost your mind. Am I telling you the truth? Amen. Do you have a vision? The Bible said where there's no vision, the people perish. <laughs> Do you truly? You know what was, and, and I thought about this, and, and, and I'm not putting any pressure on Kenny or anybody else, but I'm going to tell this church something. You better pray real hard about what you're doing in the offices of this church, even Sunday school. This brother, you know why he, ta he taught with such power for the last few years? Do you know why? It's because he believed every word that he taught to be the unfallible Word of God. Amen. Believed it. He could see it. He knew it. 
Have you got a vision? Do you believe? Do you know that God is real? How is it to you? There's nothing too hard for God. Nothing. No matter, and they don't get too mean that God can't touch. You know why we think that God ain't touching? Because we get in a hurry. I'm, I'm about as guilty as anybody I know of at getting in a hurry. I want it done right now. When I want people touched, I want God to touch them right now. Amen. But it don't work that way. God will deal with them, bring them in when He can get the glory. Not when we can get the glory. Amen. I love you, church, but my God, faith don't come. You ever think about shouting on the mountaintops? I've been to a lot of meetings, Jeff. I've been to the place that I couldn't talk, couldn't uh, walk, and drunk in the Holy Ghost, and people was to fall out in the Spirit. And I mean, my God, having a good hold this time. But you know what? I didn't learn the thing. I just sat back and swim in the Spirit of God. That, that's like uh, a birthday party with cake and ice cream. Amen? Come on. That's the handfuls that God throws down on purpose for us. But when we learn the best parts of life and the best uh, things and answers that we need is when we're crawling through the hard times. Amen? When we're having the hardest time of our life, that's when God becomes more real to us than anything in life. When we need something. When we truly need something. That's where faith is. Read the le- chapter 11 in the book of Hebrews. These people that gained faith was going through a bad time. Huh? Come on. Come on. Even the one that wanted the child and God opened her womb. In her past years, read it. She believed God. Took Him in His words. My God, that's good, ain't it? I'm going to hug
Here I lay my 
he definitely don't hear this. I mean. <laughs> last few days, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to thank you for another great opportunity. God, we'll be back at your house again today. Father, we can go home now, say it's been a good place to be, Lord. Just thank you for Brother Kenny, Lord, standing. God, give us the word of the Lord. Just touch him all the time, brother. Lord, if he wants to stand. Right, Father, Lord. just help him, Lord. God, just be at this little church to be a light on the hill that people mm -hmm. can see a difference in the life that we live, Thank God. We're all stepping down these life. communities, we Father. We know there are many, Lord. Just help them to all see, God, what God means to us, Father. God, Father. God, if it be one here today, I don't know you in a free pardon of sin. Father, reach down and touch them before it's everlasting too late. God, you give them one time, Lord, and that's it. God, after that, it's on bar time, Father. Just be with those that's lost loved ones this week, God. Just pour it out from on high, God. Let them know you love them, Lord. God, just be with those in the rest homes and the hospitals. God, the workers. God, just bless them, God, just for being there, Lord. Be with the money, Lord. Take it and use it the way you'd have it to be used, Father. Be with Brother Dave in the after service. God, just reach down and touch him. God, give him the words you'd have him to say in us accepting hearts to understand, Father. We ask it all in the holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Y'all got any in there? If you're not on Facebook and you want to be called or text about a cancellation of Wednesday or Sunday service, this is a list for that. Is there anybody that has not got their name on it and wants the name on it? Okay, I'm going to leave it up here in case you change your mind. And just a reminder, I'd like to... April the 27th, we're go it's on a Saturday, and we're going to have a fun faith day for the kids here. And it'll be like a five-hour thing on Saturday, maybe six by the time we get done organizing it. But we won't, we'll will we stay till everybody gets back to pick up their kids if they need to be longer. But we we're just going to have like some le four lessons and crafts, maybe an hour, hour and 15 minutes for each craft and lesson and we'll have lunch and if there's anybody interested in helping out doing a craft and a lesson I'd like to invite you all to come and help out and with any ideas and whatever you want to do and Bible school I know it's a long ways off it's coming up in July it's July the 15th through the 19th but be thinking about that and in a couple of weeks we'll have a organizing meeting and if you're interested in helping out we'd like to stay after in two weeks and just talk about Bible school and get organized and don't forget the food pantry it's down there if anybody needs it uh, just as a reminder next Sunday is when Ebenezer was supposed to be coming and that we were wanting to do a potluck dinner afterwards with them so if um, you are planning on staying, please bring you know some food so we have plenty for everybody. I think we're going to give them some school. Um, any birthdays and anniversaries since the last time we was here? Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. Birthday. Trish's birthday is Monday. Yeah, it was. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Oh yeah. This Wednesday night service will be over at New Home. Don't forget donations for Ebenezer's too. Cereal and camp Does that start tonight at New Home? Start no, it starts tomorrow night. Tomorrow. Yeah.
Don't come here Wednesday night if you do, just head on across the hill. <laughs> Seven o'clock, David. Seven Thank <laughs> you. 
Bible and read it at least if it's nothing else. But in uh, Zechariah 6 uh, verse uh, 15 and I just first before I read that I just want to thank God for the people in my life that's done what God's wanted them to do and live where God needed them to live for them to get my attention for God to be able to open my eyes and uh, it always comes back to uh, when I started coming to church here uh, my dad begged me all week to come to revival. Bless you, brother. It took everything that I went through that uh, Thursday night going to the bar and getting to see exactly what sin was. And I think the biggest reason I came to church that Friday night was just to basically shut my dad up. And I didn't want to come here, and I don't know why I did come here other than just the intervention of God, but... My life where I lived, it wasn't nothing of what it needed to be, and I thought I was all right with God. And I don't remember how long I was sitting in this place, but uh, David got up and said, "You think you're right and going to heaven, and you ain't turned from your sin." And that right there, it tore me up. Come on, bro. I was up for I guess two and a half, three days, or however long it was, and just living in the sin that I was living in, and thought I was all right. And, there ain't no way that you can live in the things that I was adorn and be all right with God. But uh, when David said that, it's just like God took the veil off of my eyes and I seen exactly what I was living in and what I was going to be going to when I died. And I thank God for the people in my life that's done this verse right here. And if you don't realize exactly what you're doing in this life, if you're saved, it is to build the temple of God. And if you don't realize what it is, Jesus is the chief cornerstone of the temple and that we're laid in with it for the, uh, for God. But uh, it says in verse 15, And they that are far off shall come and build in the temple of the Lord, and ye shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. And this right here is where it is. And this shall come to pass, if ye will diligently obey the voice of the Lord, your God. The temple's being built. Are you a part of the building of it? Are you living in a place where uh, you're listening and being able to obey God? And after David said what he said uh, Wednesday night, I've been thinking about that a lot. My life has just been a hard place to be here lately, just battling if God wants me to do this. and The devil, he just sits there and he basically just tries to push me out of it. And the more I talk about it around people at work, the more excited I get, and I don't care if I ever stand up here in the pulpit and preach. It ain't where God's called me to preach. It may be one day, but right now it's out in this world. I can sit and talk to a few people. I get nervous when it's a whole group of people, but I told God that I was willing. 
I don't know what he's got in store for me. I don't know exactly what I am supposed to do, but I just know that when the time comes and he asks me to say something, I'm going to say it. But Trish, you just live close as you can. Let God be the light, and when He tells you to do something, stand up and speak it, and that's all you've got to do. That's it. The temple's going to be built. It don't matter who's the ones doing it, it just matters about being obedient. The ones that's getting in are getting in, and you just got to do your part on being obedient. That's all i got, and y'all just pray for me, because this is a, it's a battle. It's a battle every day. Y'all pray. I'm working on a building. I'm working on a building. I'm working on a building for my Lord, for my Lord. It's the Holy Ghost building. It's the Holy Ghost building. It's the Holy Ghost I tell you what I do. I keep on preaching and I work on a building too. I'm working on a building. I'm working on a building. I'm working on a building for my Lord, for my Lord. It's all the ghost. Now let me tell you something. According to the Word of God, I ain't going to try to preach what you just started. Amen. The Bible said Jesus Christ was the chief cornerstone. He's the foundation. He's the cornerstone of this building. And according to the Word of God, we are in this building, hewn stones placed in the building of God. Amen. Right. You know what a hewn stone is? A hewn stone is something that don't have sharp edges. Amen. You go down here to the brook and you pick you up a stone out of the water that the water has washed over it. All the rough edges there, it's washed off. Amen. Every corner is smooth. Amen. The Bible said it was placed, we were placed into the building, rightly fitted according to the Word of God. A hewn stone in the building of God, brother. Amen. Amen. God washed all the rough edges off of me whenever the Holy Ghost flooded my soul. Amen. Amen. I got scripture I want to read this. You just, I appreciate you, Cody. I, I do. I, I do appreciate you. And I, I, uh, I want you to pray just a minute. If I can find what I was looking for this morning. Proverbs chapter 3. I want you to go with me. I got just a few verses to read. Amen. What he began to tell Trish there and the things he said. Preaching ain't an abundance of words, brother. It ain't standing here and talking for an hour and a half. Amen. It's what God says and then sit down. And I appreciate you praying for him. And he began to talk about deep here if you preach in the pulpit or not. Preaching is out here every day of our life in this world. He said to go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in. Amen. Praise be unto God. Being obedient to God. And I, I'm going to give you some scripture that come to my mind early this morning, brother. Been on my mind all morning. I thought, God, what would I say at church? This scripture came to my mind once again. This is what God said. Amen. For all you that's working on a building. Amen. Amen. For the Lord. Amen. All you that's trying to live for God. All you that's trying to figure out what you need to do, where you need to go. This is the Word of God. This is direction. This is what the Bible said. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1. He said, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For a length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about.
about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean, on, uh, lean not unto thy own understanding. Now listen. In all thy ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct Thy place, amen. Hey, can I get an amen? In all thy ways, acknowledge Him and He shall direct thy place. And you want to know which way to go? Amen. Acknowledge God. He is God. And besides Him, there is no other. He's supreme. He knows more about it than we do. I found out in life that I thought many a times that I know what I needed to preach for such and such people. And I found out I know nothing about this thing. I found out all I've done is made a mess. But it's a simple message of love, amen, that broke hearts and made them come to God. Amen. Right when I least expected it, it's when people walked out for Jesus there. And I know it ain't about me. It's about Him and about the love of God. Amen. Now listen to me. Acknowledge the Lord in all thy ways, and He shall direct thy path. Amen. If you want direction, acknowledge Him. Huh? Lean not on thy own understanding. Praise God. Listen to me. It ain't what we know or how we understand things. Amen. Sometimes I think we believe that we know more about it than God does. There's a reason God wants you to take your Bible in. There's a reason that's been on your mind. Amen. There's a reason for it. God gets the glory for it. Amen. And unless you're obedient, God can't use you. Unless you're obedient, God can't help somebody else. You see, it ain't about us. Paul said he was torn betwixt. He said a part of him wanted to go to heaven. He wanted to leave this world. Amen. But he said it's needful for you that I remain. It wasn't Paul wasn't staying for himself. It was because he was a helping somebody else. Amen. Then I get an amen. You see, God didn't save me out of alcoholism. Amen. Save my unworthy soul. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life and call me to preach just for Dave Lyle. Not for prestige. Not for a big name. Amen. That I might be hated among mankind, but that I might be able to help a lost soul make it from here to glory. So that I might be able to help give you to heaven. One day after a while, I thought about it. Woo! Do you realize we live every moment of our life every moment of our life, everything we do, everything we see, everything we accomplish is for one thing. And that's the last moments of life. Do you realize that? Yeah. It's for the last second when we leave this world. Amen? It's so people will know that there is a heaven yet and that we made it. That it's just as real as God said it was. There's a place called heaven, sister. There's a city whose silver builder and builder and maker is God. That's right. It's there. Amen. It exists. Just because we can't see it and can't touch it, it exists. Amen. Amen. I know Indiana exists. I talked to a fellow from there last night. Amen. Talked to him personally. Amen. Come on. I know there's a place called Indiana because I talked from some to somebody from there. Can I get an amen? Come on, brother. And John's life is about to be have his head cut off. He's about to die and he had him in prison. And some servants that walked with John. You see in the Word of God, they had people that walked with them. And they hung right there with them, right down to the dead. Now you've got people that walk with you, you don't know if you can trust them if you get a sneeze or not. 
Huh? Come on. Common cold turns people against you anymore. But these people stay with John Randy. And you know what old John got to die just like this talking here? It ain't easy. God didn't say it was easy to keep the faith, but he said he'd give you a measure of faith. Can I get an amen? But John began to pray and he saw Jesus. And he told him to, his ones that followed him, he said, you go find this man called Jesus. Go find him for me. And ask him for me. He said, art thou the one? Or should we seek another? Ask him a simple question. Jesus, are you still? Are you the Son of God? Are you still the Son of God? Are you still the Messiah? Jehovah Jireh, are you still him? Jesus said, you go tell my servant John the things I have seen and that the thou heard. The blind to see it. The dead to hear it. The lanes are walking up. The dead to be raised. And the poor have got the gospel preached to them. Amen. Bless him. 2019, <laughs> Jesus Christ is still Lord. Amen. Anybody know what I'm preaching? Amen. In 2019, Jesus Christ is still Lord. He's still King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And heaven is still real. And it's still there. It still exists. And God is still on the throne. Can I get an amen? Is there anybody knows this? God's still saving people. This little revival is fixing to start tomorrow night. I'm excited. There's something coming. You know why I know there's something coming? Because God's people prayed this down. I know they did. Amen? I know they did. We want revival. Revival's got to start somewhere. Got to get an amen. It may be a new home, Billy Joe. And we see our people get in this thing. Wouldn't it be a great place to be? Say, preacher, I don't know if I'll go or not. We'll miss it if you want to. That's up to you. And when you choose the things of the world over the things of God, I'm not trying to make you feel guilty. I can't be everywhere either. But I don't know about the rest of you, but they ain't much going on in February, are they? <laughs> huh? They ain't Bless the horse shows. <laughs> you say, I'll use me. I won't, I won't pitch nothing out that you like. I'll, I'll use what I like. <laughs> they ain't no rides are going on. There ain't no horse shows in February. Huh? What about the things of God? What about the things of God? I'd like to see somebody saved there. I've been praying for some people. I'd like to see them saved there. I'd like to see them get what we've got. Amen. I like to see them taste heaven and realize that heaven is not just a story that somebody told. Amen. Come on. Like Jack and the Beanstalk. It ain't like that. See, this is real. That's right. Jack and the Beanstalk was made up. Yeah. But it's amazing to me that, praise God, people can believe that there was a little fellow named Jack that got some magic beans and he his little bag and he dropped one and got water on it. Praise God, he turned into a beanstalk and went into the sky where the giants were at. <laughs> yeah, these people believe that stuff. <laughs> but yet they can't believe that there's a God in glory. There's a man called Jesus that died for me and you that hey, go free. Hey, and heaven is real. But I'm telling you right now, praise God, there's evidence in my life that heaven is real. There's evidence in my life salvation is real. And there's evidence in my life, Cody, that I'm a part of the building. I've been placed in God's church. And I'm not talking about Pleasant Chapel Church. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost building. Amen. I'm talking about the church that at the day of Pentecost that hey man, old Peter stood boldly and preached Christ Jesus and Him crucified. Can I get an amen? That's the gospel, the good news. I'll deliver to a man called Jesus died that you can go free at no cost. Can I get an amen? Peter stood and preached Him boldly and 3,000 souls 
were added unto the church. Not the Baptist church, not the Methodist church, not the Presbyterian, but the church, the Holy Ghost Church of God. Can I get an amen? He said one faith, one baptism, one shepherd, and one bowl. Can I get an amen? And the name of one church. Those that believe the gospel. The Bible said that God added into the churches that pleased Him. Didn't He say daily? <laughs> like the preach on that. To please as it pleased Him. But you know what? I'm going to give you something new to on this. You're going to study. I found out that Randy, most people read their Bible to prove me wrong, not to learn what the truth is. <laughs> According to the Word of God, keep the last stone. The last stone is going to be placed into the building. And it's done. And when it's done, we're going home. The last stone is going to be placed into the building. What's that, preacher? The last soul is going to be saved. The last one's going to be written down the Lamb's Book of Life. Heaven's going to shout. Heaven's going to roll back as a great scroll. Jesus Christ's going to step out on the clouds of glory. And praise God, the trumpet's going to sound. The dead in Christ is going to rise. And us that remain is going to be caught up in the air. To forever be with the Lord. He said with these words, comfort one another. Bless him, Lord. Bless him, Lord. Bless him. Now that tires me out. That tires me up. That tires me up. That tires, tires our job to get them there. Amen. It's our job to get them there. To read the scriptures that we might have an answer whenever they need an answer. Amen. Can we get an amen? Amen. amen. Uh, I get, I get excited. I get, I'm gonna hush. I ain't gonna preach all day. I feel so good. You know, I, I went through the barn this morning, Keith, that bounce. Like that had me a spell. And it come to me, Eric. Did you know I ain't felt this good in months? It's been a long time since I got up. Amen. And no pain in my body. I felt so good. And I got to to the barn before I realized, Billy Joe, I wasn't even a hurt this morning. I thought, my God, I could have me a spell this morning. My God, I feel so good. I said, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Float my knee out the other night. Don't keep I said, my God. Keith said, is it going to be sore tomorrow? I said, my God, I ain't going to make it back to the truck. Amen. Pray God, kingdom swelled up. Come on! I stood down and read and began to pray to God. And I said, God, if this is what you want back in my life, don't you let the devil hinder me. And my God, I've had me a spell ever since. Huh? You see, Cody, you think you're the only one that don't know exactly where you need to be or what you need to be doing. I feel the same way. Sometimes I don't know what direction to go, but God turns it. Amen. Huh? I mean, going down the road, when I first started preaching, we'd drive around. We'd get out a bunch of them. They thought we was nuts. We'd just drive around. Up and down the back, just drive around. And we'd pray. And all at once, we'd be driving by somebody's house, and God said, Stop! Right here. I want you to stop. Right here. Didn't know the people from Adam. We walk up on the porch, Melissa, and we'd tell them, so you don't know me, and I don't know you. But the God in heaven, I was driving by, and he said to stop. And when we began to get the words out of our mouth, they start crying. Amen. Come on, praise God. Me and Brother Tommy met, amen, sought out to hunt somebody to pray with one Sunday evening. Headed way up over yonder Beach Mountain, driving up down through the house and developments. And all at once, God said, Stop right here. Amen. Brother Tommy went up and knocked on the door. And the man answered the door. He said, Brother, he said, Can I help you? Tommy said, I don't know if he can or not. He said, me and this preacher been driving around for an hour. He said, we were looking for somebody to pray with. That man went to crying. His wife was sitting there in a wheelchair. He up with cancer. He know God sent us to that place. And heaven fell that evening. Amen. 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 
Thank you, Jeff. You know why they need to? Because there's a constant warfare between this flesh and the spirit. The flesh wants to do what it wants to do, and the spirit to lead us in a direction. And we're thinking about things that we know, and we think it won't work that way. And God said, just get out of the way and let me do it. It's going to be fine. Amen. Things are going to change. Things can't stay the same. Do you know that? It can't stay the same. The ends are coming. I'm so excited, Eric. I can't understand, but I feel so good this morning. If I'd have had about 30 more minutes going, I'd have done. I thought about grabbing my saddle and getting that little black stag out and taking him a trip. Just to see how many he was this morning. I felt so good. I thought, my God. We've been getting him out of Eden and he'll buck so hard, Jeff. But you ought to see that thing buck. I've never seen nothing buck like that. Hey man, he's, he's fed up and he's honored as he comes, amen. And I thought this morning, praise God, I feel so good. If I had about 30 minutes, I'd try you with it too this morning. Yeah, yeah. And I ain't felt that good a long time. Telling you right now, God's good. And if you'll believe God, sometimes we get caught up and know how we feel and how we hurt. I know we all got trouble. We all got pain. Yes, we know. But we've all got a God that can take care of anything. Amen. I think I was going to praise Him. Amen. Acknowledge Him in all thy ways. Amen. He'll direct your path. Amen. Amen. Come on. Praise God. Amen. Acknowledge Him in all thy ways and He will direct thy path. Right. You want to know how to go? Bring on Jesus. Amen. Amen. I used to go in the grocery. I used to go airport and just, I, my God, I just wanted to bust out and tell somebody about Jesus about a good stand. And I just wanted, I'd set people up. You ever set people up? Huh? You ever set people up? So you, you conniving. No. Have you ever set people up? You can set people up. They'll ask you a question. Did you know that? Say, how can I witness that? Set them up. Get them to ask you. Hey man, I go in the store, in the department store, grocery store, Walmart, anywhere. I just be just, oh, you get extremely happy. People can't figure that out because everybody's full of gloom and doom. You can bounce around Louise just a little bit and smile very big and act like you're really enjoying life. And they just can't hardly stand. They'll ask you once. There's a lady asked me, she said, you act awful happy. She said, you're doing good today, so you get better every day. Every day you get better. She said, I've never heard that before. She said, what's your secret? I said, my God, it ain't no secret. I said, it's Jesus. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? She looked like she'd seen a ghost, praise God. Amen. Come on. Woo! My God, he is my rock. He's my salvation. He's my peace. He's my fortress. He's my salvation. Can I get an amen? amen. Woo! He's worth talking about. Yeah. Amen. He's worth talking about. Yeah. I've had that, I've had people that ask me, said, "How you doing?" You really start telling them how you feel. They'll walk off. Amen. They didn't care anyway. You really go to tell them how you really feel, how you hurt so bad you can't hardly move. Amen. <laughs> and you have to get that was turn walk off. I thought, why did you ask? Huh? So why don't I tell them about something that's worth talking to anybody? Amen. Amen. The shore I hurt. Golly, Jesus is good. Amen. Sure I'm having a bad day, but it'll get better tomorrow because of God is with me. Amen. Huh? Come on. Come on. Sure. I ain't got enough money to pay all my bills this month. But Jesus said, I'll never leave you, never forsake you. He said, I'll go into the ends of the world. Amen. I may not have it today, but tomorrow's a new day. Yeah. Can I get an amen? It's a coming. I'm just waiting on the Lord tonight. I got to get back to acting crazy for Jesus. Amen. I enjoy it. I don't know about everybody else. I'm going to hush. I'm going to hush. I'm going to hush. It's worth talking about, Tree. Amen. I love you. I love this church. I love everybody that's in this church. I love every face. Amen. I thank God for the Spirit of God, Sister Sally. I asked God this morning, I said, Lord, 
I need you to touch me one more time. I'd like to feel your presence in the house of God one more time. Amen. 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 I thank God for what He's allowed me to do and what's fixing to happen. There's people coming there. There's people coming. People coming. I thank God for you. Don't believe the lies of the devil. Don't be tricked by Satan. You know he's work. You've always he's a liar. And everybody knows you can't trust a liar. You can't trust a liar. That's just the way it is. The Bible said the devil was a liar and the father of it. Amen. Come on. I'm going to hush. If I was a sinner, Woo! come on. Hey, what I would do. Quit my sin and start my prayer and work on the yeah, Come on. Might as well have church on you. I'm working on a building for my Lord, for my Lord. Thank you, bro. It's the Holy Ghost building. It's the Holy Ghost building. It's the Holy Ghost building for my Lord, for my Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank God good. If I wasn't out with God, I'd get right with God. Amen. Huh? From this day forth, I'd work for Jesus. Pay much. David, we need to give Shay Lemons the right hand full of Belshazzar. Miss Shay. Yeah. Pay much. Come on, girl. Now, this little sister joined the church last week, and she joined my baptism, right? And we done baptized. <laughs> she done had the right hand of uh, welcome. And she needs the right hand of fellowship this morning with all rights of any other city in the church. Amen. So, as you get your song up, we're going to fellowship. And everybody shake your hand and tell you to be praying for her. We're glad to have her. Amen. Amen.